All right, in this video, we're gonna do part three to finish up this uh, little mini series of sliding and shuffling stuff in KOWP. And between last week and today's tutorial, I did pick up the Galaxy Note 8. When I did that, I wasn't even thinking about how that was going to change this tutorial. Uh, the screen height on the Note 8 is a little bit different, the aspect ratio is, as compared to my Galaxy S7 Edge that I had been using for the past few months. So the height, I forget what it was, maybe like 1260 or something like that. Well, now it's 1480. So I had to go in and adjust all of my Y offsets um, to make these things go to the center. But as you can see, I still have them going to the center. And that formula that I discussed back in part one and part two uh, had us taken the screen height, that's the SI function in KOWP. I was subtracting the size of each square, 300 by 300 and then we divide that by two. So my new Y offsets are gonna be 590. Um, I forgot what it was back in part one and part two. Just go back and check out those videos. I discussed that in detail on getting these objects to move to the center. Something else that happened. Uh, when I got my Note 8, I took the SD card out of my Galaxy S7. I backed up a lot of my custom stuff, tasker stuff, uh, just some random things on the device. And then when I put it into my Note 8, I went and I moved some files from the SD card to the Note 8. Uh, just, I, I moved them. And then when I moved them over, I was like, well, hang on a second. I don't want all these files on my Note 8. So I deleted it and then I went back to my SD card and I was like, I didn't copy them from the SD card. I moved them from the SD card. So when I deleted them from my Note 8, they were gone. Um, so no big deal though, the KOWP Toots was updated rather recently. It's gonna be updated again real soon with this entire tutorial here, but I did lose a lot of things that I was working on, my little projects uh, for myself, for like dark skittles and stuff like that. But all that set aside, I recreated this. I did have to apply those new Y offsets. And what I also did in this tutorial was I went ahead and, and created a full setup of interacting objects. So hopefully by you watching part one and part two, I didn't discuss on what happens with these, but let's go ahead and have a look. I'm touching this yellow one now, and now we have the yellow one doing exactly what the red one does uh, when we press the red, except now the yellow one's sliding and moving up, whereas the red one slides and moves down. Good news, to duplicate this, copy and paste the animations that we made for the red one back in part one, copy them down to your yellow group that we call BL for bottom left, and then just make sure you change your Y offsets. Again, I'm putting a lot of that on you to make sure you have watched part one and part two, but all I literally did was I copied those animations down to here. Same thing for BTR, look at that. So I activated my bottom right, let's look at that one more time. You know, all these other ones are called TLTR, CLCR, BL, but yet this one is called BTR. The reason why I'm using BTR is because if I used just the letters BR, that would interfere with the BR function in KOWP. For those of you that are familiar with the BR function, it's the broadcast receiver, it's how we communicate with Tasker and stuff like that. So I just use BTR. So, you know, again, watching part one and part two, I've, I've talked about copying animations over, that's all I did for both of these. And then what I've also done, you may have noticed now that when I activate a bottom one, these two centerpieces are moving down um, and they're gonna stay down here. Well, we talked about that in part two, except in part two, you know, these two centerpieces now, the dark blue and the pink, they're moving up because we're activating our two top pieces. So if I close those top pieces down, we have them moving back to the center. Again, that's a lot of copying and pasting and then just changing your Y offset so that you have them moving in the direction that you want to. Now for the center pieces, again, apply all your correct touches to activate them, but check out what happens with the center pieces now. When I press the pink one, the blue one goes down here and it scales these. Hopefully by watching part one and part two, you've kind of got your own ideas on how you want these things to animate. But basically what I have going on here is this. When I activate my CL, notice this word's gonna change to CL. When it's CL, I want that blue one to move down. All right, well what about if I activate the CR? I want the pink one to move up in between here. So check that out. Again, I'm just using some of the same ideas I gave you from part one and part two. Well, what are we gonna talk about in this tutorial? Well, what I wanna talk about in this tutorial now is I want to be able to uh, animate some things in on these squares. And as I'm doing this, I'm just showing you all these various touches and crazy things that happen, but all of these squares are now interacting with, with each other. 
I will post this on KOWP Toots really soon so that you can get all this. But now, let's go into KOWP and let's actually put some text inside of each overlap group. Maybe like temperature, time, battery, whatever you want to put inside of them. So I'm just going to start off real quick. I'll show you one, for example, TL, the top left group, this red one. I'm going to add some text and I'm just going to make this quick. We're going to put the, the time, the current time in there. And notice I'm putting that inside of the overlap group. Uh, TL. So therefore, when I press the, the red square and animate it, this stuff is going to animate with it because it's inside of that overlap group. And even when I start moving things around, notice that time is scaling inside of that group. Very important um, if you're just getting started with KOWP, putting stuff inside of groups and make sure they all kind of animate together, if that makes sense. So uh, fast forward through this part, I'm going to put the temperature, some battery, and just some other random pieces up here. So all I've done here is just added some quick text, um, battery, time, temperature, the today's date, CPU usage, and then just uh, my network provider. So again, all of these are inside of each overlap group. So as we click on these and make them interact, notice the stuff is scaling with it because each item is sitting inside of the overlap group that it's associated with. Now, something again to take note of is the BTR. That's this bottom right. Make sure uh, in your codes that you use BTR instead of BR if you're following along with this tutorial. So add whatever text you want. Now what we want to happen is, for example, if I, want, if I press this temperature up here, it's going to scale in like this, and I want to see maybe a, a weather icon or something pop up. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to add a component, um, one that's pre-built, and we're going to uh, tweak it to make it kind of sit in here so, kind of nice, but it's not going to sit inside of this overlap group. Grab a weather component, any one you want. I'm just going to load one from the base pack that comes with KOWP. So I've loaded the uh, Weather Flat SVG, and I'm just going to bump that size on up a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead now this now take note take note of this this is important this is sitting right inside of root um, so basically I want whatever whatever you want to animate for the weather piece I'm going to uh, go ahead and activate my green one which has the weather and I want this sun to be like right here or whatever the current icon is so I'm just going to take that and I'm going to position this weather component where I want it something like that of course, the colors don't match real, really well, but we want this thing to fade in as this thing comes into the center and we want it to go out otherwise. So that's exactly where I want it. Maybe you have some highs and lows and other things for your weather components, but again, situate it so that, you know, we're still seeing the temperature and then your other pieces might be beneath it. But here's what's important about this. We want to do an animation and we want this thing to react when our GV go is equal to TR. This is the important part to get this stuff to animate in and animate back out. So the animation for this weather component that sits directly inside of root, we're going to react on a formula and it's gonna be just like our other ones. But now we want this to animate if GV go is equal to TR because that's the one that we have for our weather. We want to bring this animation forward, otherwise we want to bring it back. Now all I want to do here for the sake of this video and speed to speed this up, I just want it to uh, fade in, but I'm still going to use a complex animation and there is a reason why. I want this thing to fade in, not at the very beginning of the animation. I want this square, this green square, I want it to slide and come in and after it's come in or just as it's coming in, I want this sun to fade in. So I want it to fade in kind of late, but I want it to fade out really fast when I close the weather group. So what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to come to our animator and at around 95%, close to the end of our animation, I want this, uh, what property do we want? We want the transparency. We want it to be 100% transparent. But also, we at 0%, we want it to be 100% transparent. So for a good chunk of this animation, from 0% to 95%, this sun or whatever icon we have for our weather is going to be completely transparent. And then at 100%, we're going to set the transparency down to 0. This is going to make it fade in 
it's still going to have a fade. It's going to be a fast fade, but it's still going to fade in. And you'll see exactly why I'm using a complex animation just for a basic fade. This prevents us from having to mess around with delays, which is what I used to do with things like this, is tweaking the delays. And I don't want to do that anymore because complex animations make it so much faster. So if I check that, now watch what happens here. Let's go ahead and save this. Go back to the home screen. And when we activate TR, watch what happens. Do you see how that sun comes in right as it's finishing off? Because we've set a good chunk of our animation from zero to 95%, we don't have that sun doing anything. It's completely transparent. Then for that last little 5%, from 95 to 100%, we had the transparency changing to 0% transparent. That's why you can see it. Now watch how fast it's going to go away. Because we want it to animate or fade off quick. We'll notice it disappears almost immediately. Now we can go in there and we can tweak that. If that's a little bit too fast for you, you can come back into here, go to your complex animation, and maybe you want it to fade in around, say, 75% or whatever. But let's save that. It's still going to be pretty much transparent for 75% of the animation. So let's check it out. Don't see it, don't see it, and that's pretty good. It kind of fades in right as the green is sliding, and now watch this fade off as the green slides up. It's doing it almost immediately. This is the same concept you want to apply to every single piece. So I'll show you one more here to kind of sum up this tutorial. Let's do the battery, and we'll do a base pack. Um, you do get a little battery bar with the base pack in KOWP. So basically when I press this, I got all this other junk going on, which is what we've discussed in part one and part two, but I want a battery bar to animate or fade in right around here. So I'm going to go ahead and activate that uh, battery percentage one. And I'm going to go back to root and I'm going to import that uh, base pack, that component that has the battery bar. So here's our battery bar up here. Let's go ahead and situate this where we want it. Again, this is inside of root. That way we can animate it. So now I have it in the center. And let's see here. Let's go ahead and unlock this thing. That way we can take away uh, the text. I don't want the text inside of there. So I'm going to take that text. I'm just going to delete that since I already had the 84% on my actual square. So that got rid of that. And now let's just take this thing and let's scale it up a little bit. That way it surrounds. Um, and, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It don't have to sit inside of the square because these are two different items and we have them animating completely different. But I mean, there's nothing wrong with that effect. Let's let it stay like that. So for the animation, you can type in an animation or since we've already kind of got this animation created with our weather flat SVG, the one we had animating with the weather, I'm going to copy that because I want it to pretty much do the same thing. Fade in, you can add your own, own little flair to it, make it rotate in and all that stuff, but I'm just going to paste that right into this battery bar animation. Now we need to definitely need to change the code here. The code now needs to be if GVGo is equal to CL because CL, the center left square was the one that had our battery. But now since I've copied and pasted, I don't have to tweak this uh, entry stuff anymore. This is going to fade in um, after 75% of the animation has been uh, completed. It's going to fade in for that last 25% of the animation. So it's pretty cool, right? I mean, the thing is, once you create one of them, copy and paste that animation. Make sure you change your formula to correspond with the correct button you're pressing. And uh, we should be good to go. So let's see what we get here. Um, see how that fades in? Now watch this. I'm going to close this purple one, this CL. And notice it fades right out. So now I'm going to let these two interact with each other because these are the two that I have applied some, uh, some more animations to it. So now we should have the sun popping in. And now if I activate this battery one, uh, the sun's going to go away and the battery bar is going to come in right here eventually. You see that? That's a pretty cool transition. Now, if you come in here and you apply your own components or whatever, just make sure you put not, nothing showing up when we do these, but that's because I haven't added anything to them yet. Same principle though. So I hope you do see the benefits of using a complex animation. Even if you're doing a basic fade, it totally takes away that whole idea of having to mess around with delay codes. I don't use delays a lot anymore um, because complex animations let us adjust that percentage very quickly. And there you have it, you know, three part series. This part here, I didn't go over, you know, as much on how I'm activating my centerpieces, but hopefully by watching part one and part two, you can definitely see um, where I'm just really copying and pasting a lot of animation codes to get these things to interact and do pretty much the same thing, except remember, adjust your Y offset 
And uh, here our main focus was getting these pieces here in the center to animate up. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.